Coming up on Tech News Today, is the Samsung Galaxy S4 any good? Google wants to eliminate passwords. Is that a good idea? It sounds like a good idea. And Uber wins freedom for New York City cabs. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, April 24th, 2013. Tech News Today is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, or online store. Check out their new commerce solution so you can start selling stuff immediately. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to squarespace.com and use offer code TNT4. And by 99designs, the world's largest online graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash TNT to receive a free design consultation. That's 99designs.com slash TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Maya Zaktar. I'm Alex Gumpel. Alex Gumpel filling in for the... Matern uh, paternity leave, uh, Jason House. So big congratulations. They had the baby last night. We're very happy for Jason and his family. But we must continue to bring you the top tech stories of the day, starting with the news views. Apple earnings beat expectations with revenue of $43.6 billion U.S., but the first decline in profits in 10 years with earnings per share of $10.09, down from $12.30 a year ago. iPad and iPhone sales increased while Mac sales remained flat and iPod sales as expected plunged. Tim Cook announced new dividend and stock buyback programs, which might make investors a little happy, and promised new products in the autumn and into 2014. Separately, Apple announced today that its WWDC will take place from June 10th through June 14th in San Francisco. Tickets go on sale Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Metro PCS shareholders approved a new deal to merge with Deutsche Telekom's T-Mobile to give the German company a chance to revive its U.S. business. The deal should go through on May 1st. Bowing to shareholder pressure, Deutsche Telekom, you might recall, on April 10th, agreed to lower the size and the interest rate of a loan to the joint company. The transaction will add more than 9 million prepaid customers to T-Mobile, as well as well-needed wireless spectrum to provide faster data services to compete with the likes of Verizon and AT&T. Nintendo reported its financials and it made a profit of around 70 million 70 billion dollars US dollars 70 billion US dollars I can speak well today. Don't get too excited. That profit was due to investments and currency fluctuations. Nintendo also reported an operating loss of 366 million US dollars and the Wii U sales were below expectations. When reached for comment, Nintendo spokesperson Super Mario said, "Let's make more money, okay?" before disappearing down a pipe. <laughs> I think they should get in the business of investing and in, in managing currency fluctuations. Twitter account hacks have been coming fast and embarrassing. Uh, there was the hack of CBS's 60 Minutes account over the weekend, followed by a hack of the AP yesterday, which actually affected the stock market. Wired reports Twitter has a two-step authentication system working internally and is undergoing internal testing. Two-step or two-factor authentication requires both something you know, like a password, and another factor, like something you have, like a USB key or a cell phone. It is implemented by sites like Google and Dropbox and World of Warcraft and generally considered more secure than just a password. WhatsApp is getting baked into Nokia like a pie. Well, maybe not mm. like a pie, but physically. Mm. Nokia's Asha 210 runs on the firm's proprietary series 40 OS and will be targeted at consumers in emerging markets looking for cheaper alternatives to Nokia's Windows Phone range and other smartphones. The feature triggers WhatsApp, which of course is a cross-platform messaging app and offers a free alternative to something like SMS texts. HTC and Nokia already have handsets with Facebook buttons, so WhatsApp... Coming up, baked like a pie. Mm. Mm -hmm. Quick correction, Nintendo made $70 million U.S. dollars as a profit. Android qu uh, keyboard enthusiasts rejoice. Swipe for Android is available for download in the Google Play Store for $0.99. Cents. The app lets you slide your finger around to type, which a lot of keyboards let you do. 
but also features some other input modes, such as Dictator, which uses drag and dictation, and Typer, which lets a, a user type as fast as possible without paying attention to the screen until the end of a sentence. Everybody wants to be the first to solve the internet TV problem, and now it looks like Amazon will make a bid. Bloomberg reports its sources say Amazon will develop and release its own TV set-top box, allowing people to stream internet videos onto their home TV. Good luck, Mr. Bezos. The more people who try, the better chance somebody's going to get it right. Google's acquired natural language processing startup Wavy, that's W-A-V-I-I, -I, for a reported 30 million plus, reported by TechCrunch. Word is that both Apple and Google were competing for the startup based in Seattle, but Google eventually won out. Apple would have wanted the company, which developed its own aggregation tech and natural summarization algorithms for its Siri division. The 25-person team, including the founder, Adrian Aon, will be moving from Seattle down to California to join Google's Knowledge Graph di division. AMD has announced official specs for the Radeon HD 7990 video card. Eight teraflops, four times the PS4's GPU, mind you. 8.6 billion transistors, six gigabytes of RAM, PCI Express 3.0 support, and a cooling system, which claims to be three decibels quieter than NVIDIA's Titan. That means it can handle, all that stuff anyway, means it can handle games at 4K, if you have the other gear to handle 4K. The 7990 will arrive in two weeks and sell for $900. $99. BitTorrent just released an alpha version of Sync, which lets you sync data online using BitTorrent's decentralized file sharing technology. All transfers are encrypted using 256-bit AES encryption. BitTorrent says you can use it to transfer large amounts of data or even use it as a remote backup since Sync is unlimited. In the pre-alpha test of Sync, users moved over 200 terabytes of data. This episode of Tech News Today brought to you by our friends at Squarespace.com. You know them as the fast and easy way to create a website, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to do a blog, a portfolio, uh, and now an online store. If you haven't heard about this yet, check it out. New Commerce Solution lets you become a shopkeeper on the internet. E-commerce, boom, done. With award-winning designs and the ease and reliability of Squarespace at your fingertips, you can integrate it to work with the Squarespace templates and sell physical or or digital goods. It uh, doesn't really matter. You What you get is fast merchant accounts set up. You can accept payments right away by credit or debit card. Single interface for order management, tracking orders, providing customer email updates, printing shipping labels, and adding coupons. Squarespace Commerce is included with the business plan subscription, which starts at $24 a month when you sign up for a year, or it's $30 for the monthly plan. Squarespace gives you and your website the best mobile experience. They've developed templates with mobile-ready responsive designs. That means your site automatically restructures itself like a superhero to look great on whatever device you're holding. If you've got a smartphone, you got a tablet, you got a big old 30-inch monitor, it doesn't matter, your site looks perfect. And of course, this means you get a mobile-ready store with the new commerce solution. It's fast and easy to use, exceptionally well-designed, better social media integration, automatically import, sync, and publish from your social media sites with a few clicks. You got to try it out. It's an all-in-one platform integrating all your website needs, domains, design, development, commerce, hosting, 24-7 customer support. But don't take any of my words for it. Go try it out for yourself. Do it right now. Squarespace.com. Don't have to give them a credit card or anything. Just sign up, build your website, import your old website. Then if you decide to purchase it, use the offer code TNT4 and get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. Now that includes monthly and annual plans. So you can get 10% off the annual plan, and don't forget you get a free domain name with the annual plan. That's squarespace.com. Use that offer code TNT4. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. And we thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Today. Joining us now to discuss the stories of the day, happy to have the host of This Week in YouTube, Lamar Wilson, on the show. How's it going, Lamar? Going good. This is the last leg of my world tour on Twit, so mm -hmm. I, I saved the best for last. Ah, oh, that's great? nice of you to hey, say. Well, except, we're, except, except for the social hour, that was awesome too. I was about to say, uh, <laughs> excuse me, this is a fine show, but well, that was the hour. last last, so that was the best for last. Now this yeah, is the I last last. Pretty good last. on frame rate myself, but <laughs> just saying. Yeah, NSFW uh, was pretty good. You know, All right. yeah, yeah. So it was, it's good to uh, be here, though. Definitely. Definitely check it out at twit.tv slash YTV. Uh, it's one of our new shows here on the Twit Network. Lamar hosts it with Leo and Chad. Uh, but let's start off with some Apple earnings reports. Uh, we heard the numbers. Good revenue, good profit, but the first drop in 10 years 
for the company. Uh, iCloud grew. We didn't hear about that. 50 million to 300 million users. Mm -hmm. $4 billion they made from iTunes. Apple's really been pushing the fact that they're not just a hardware company. They may not be a software company, but they're a hybrid company. They're an ecosystem, they like to say. So it's good to see, uh, for them, numbers coming from iTunes. China grew 8%. That's another area they're focusing on year over year. $8.2 billion in revenue. Just a point in front of U.S. growth, though. I think they would have liked to see bigger numbers there. Uh, increasing their quarterly dividend. Their margins are going to stay low. And this is where the, the conversation starts. They're saying, look, we're still gonna we're still gonna have profit problems. Uh, our margins are pressed. Uh, we're we're not going to be making as much money off the stuff we sell, even though we expect sales to go up. And Tim Cook said, "Our teams are hard at work at some amazing new hardware, software, and services that we can't wait to introduce this fall and throughout 2014. So we are not going to see anything different from Apple in next quarter's earnings report. We're going to see uh, a pressure on the margins." And we're not going to have any new products, it sounds like. We'll, we'll get some announcements about the operating systems at WWDC. But can Apple's investors survive another quarter without a product launch? And can Apple's stock price stay up there? Sarah, what, what, what's your best guess on this? I mean, Apple's going to be fine. But what about those poor investors? <laughs> those poor investors. Uh, Apple has... Uh, enjoyed, you know, the, you know, a golden throne of earnings reports for a long time. I, you know, I, I know I sound like, you know, I, I sound like a parrot, um, but this is, this is, uh, you know, they've got a capital returns program. I think that's really wise. Um, it comes at a good time where there's an earnings report that a lot of people will be able to point to and say, see, this is exactly what we thought would happen. This is the beginning of the downturn for Apple and Apple saying, okay, well, we're going to take this opportunity to make some people happier. Um, but it's, a lot of these numbers to me, you know, are just inevitable. The, the computer division sees a decline. Uh, the iPad division is nice and strong. You know, the iPod division is... Is on its way out. And at this point, I think, you know, as you mentioned, Tom, China is an extremely important market for Apple. They're going to continue to, 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 to add to their efforts there. And they're still trying to get on China's largest mobile carrier. So, yeah, this is, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's exactly what everybody expected, isn't it? I, I, it is. In fact, they beat expectations. They had a little better revenue, a little better profit than, than people expected. But people are wanting Apple to, to show them the future, show them where they're going, show them that it's going to be more than just an iPad mini uh, last autumn. They're used to that. They're used to more products. Lamar, do you, do you think it'll make people too nervous? Will we see people jumping out of buildings or something? I don't <laughs> Wow. Thanks for that question. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think regular people give a darn about it. I mean, the people who are talking about, you know, who are who are making all the fuss about their earnings reports or about their stock price, most of them have no clue about stocks. And so they're just talking out of their butt. So they 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 just don't know. And I I think Apple's going to be just fine. They they have some, you know, they're going to make the investors happy. They're giving away what 100 billion dollars by 2015 back to them. Uh, they, they've already hinted there's going to be new product lines, which I'm thinking is probably going to be like a TV or, or a watch or something uh, like that. So I think they're fine. We're just always, we're in a lull right now of technology, period. I mean, it's not that much technology news really uh, coming out, out right now. So I, I think people just need to be patient. I, I, they're, they're, Apple's doing fine. Apple's double-digit growth couldn't last forever. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, and, the and the fact that they're repositioning is likely a good thing. Uh, they need to figure out how to crack the China market. Uh, they need to figure out what, what their next innovative product is going to be, but it needs to be launched right. It needs to be good when it comes out. And that may be all that we're seeing, is Apple internally saying, you know what, we're just not going to put anything out until it's ready, uh, and we're going to reposition our supply chain so that we can really sell competitively in China, and that means we're going to mm -hmm. have to put some pressure on the profit margins for a while. Ayaz, is that all it is? Well, it seems like Apple's trying to figure out what to do. There's a lot of shifts that have been going on in the past couple of years. The uh, deteriorating, deteriorating relationship with Samsung is causing Apple to find new vendors for chips, RAM, and every other thing that Samsung would, would provide. Their demand was so high that they needed so many different uh, screen manufacturers. I think this is kind of a, a transition period 
where Apple, they've had a bunch of missteps. We had the iMac that was released or at least announced so early and then wasn't available. There was the Maps mess. There's a whole bunch of these products that came out that weren't ready. And what Apple needs to do is if they're going to bother to come out with anything, uh, anything major, there's no way they're going to come out with something that's half finished because they don't need to get another burned product out there because otherwise then people will start freaking out. I don't think people will be jumping out of buildings, but they might be dumping their stock and that's going to cause that price to drop even further. Well, and a that's lot safer. of this hinges on the amazing new hardware, right? I, I don't think anybody is arguing, you know, that Apple no longer, you know, is the only company that has the top phones. You know, there are a lot of really nice phones out there. So, you know, iPhone lovers still love iPhones, but it's not as if as an iPhone user, you can say, well, it's clearly the best phone. It's just... The, the market is crowded with amazing phones. So what are what what is this new hardware? You know, can Apple be not necessarily first, because Apple's not about being first, it's about being best and and blow people away in the new markets. Well, one of the things that Apple is facing is increased competition in smartphones, and Samsung is obviously their biggest competitor. Samsung Galaxy S4 reviews came out of their non-disclosure agreement period today. What are we hearing, IS? And we're hearing a lot of critical reviews. Uh, David Pogue of the New York Times saying, if this was Apple who adds the letter S to denote a slightly upgraded model, Samsung could have called this phone the Galaxy S3S. All told, nobody at the office will even notice you've bought the latest and greatest. Saying, Talking about the design not changing too much. Over at The Verge... David Pierce saying, I don't like holding this phone, and I can't overstate how much that informs the experience of using it. And he lets out, he lets people try out the S4, and the reaction people would do was the opposite of the standard reaction of the HTC One. Everyone wanted to hold the HTC One, but everyone just kind of played with the S4, handed it back to him. Uh, Walt Mossberg over at Wall Street Journal says, not a great phone, and recommended the HTC One over this. Uh, that being said, The Verge gave it a score of 8.0 out of 10. Lamar, are, are reviewers just being overly critical of the S4 at this point? Is this just what happens when you have an amazing phone for a couple of years? Yeah, I, I think it just kind of goes back to that that Moore's Law thing. I, at some point, the the iteration and, and has to has to stop, and you you can't keep going, you know, further and further with processor speed and and all of that. So yeah, to 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 people who are used to them in, innovating so much, now it's kind of gone to a screeching halt and they're looking more and more like Apple. And of course, Android users don't like looking like Apple. You know, they, they tease Apple when they come out with an S series, but now they have an S series phone. It just wasn't named that. And 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 so and, and so it's very interesting. I've played with the phone. I think it's a I think it's a nice you know, step up. It's not. It doesn't blow me away at, at by by any means. But it, I, I think one of the other problems is that they came out of the gate with that ridiculous show that I was at front row, uh, <laughs> and Samsung really touting this phone and it, and it 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 doesn't it doesn't stand up to the show and the the spectacle that they came out with. You know, but it is a good phone. I, I think reviewers are. I think they're being fair with it. Tom, did Samsung set up a really impossible model with its, its series of Galaxy phones because they had a bunch of hits. They were the underdog, so to speak, and have become pretty much the top dog when it comes to Android phones. People think Galaxy and then maybe Nexus if they're really in the know. Did Samsung just set themselves up for this? Well, it, it, that's kind of the same conversation we were having with Apple, right? Is mm -hmm. too much success a bad thing? Uh, I don't think that this is a bad phone, but I do think they are suffering a little bit from that continual like, yes, the, the Samsung Galaxy S is the best phone again, and this is a marginal upgrade. Maybe they shouldn't have made such a big deal out of it uh, mm. if they would have underplayed it they might have gotten a, a lot more favorable reaction. As it is, the, the review score, I think, is very telling. It's a good phone. It's 8 out of 10. It's all in the perception. It's all in the reaction where you're hearing that negativeness about it because it isn't anything new. That's not deadly to Samsung, in my opinion, uh, but it means that they're not winning the hype cycle this time around, and they have every other time. Sarah, at what point is Samsung going to really focus on high-end design? Because over at The Verge, again, here's another quote uh, about the S4. It makes an awful first impression, slippery and slimy and simply unpleasant in your hand. <laughs> yeah. So this idea of these plasticky phones, will Samsung go, look, the HTC One is doing metal and, and, and glass. Why aren't we? Yeah. I mean, that's a terrible review, right? I mean, that's that goes way beyond like, you know, this phone is... Uh, it feels a little cheap. Uh, you know, there's there's something about the HTC One that just feels more substantial or well-crafted. Slippery, slimy, unpleasant. Those are really bad adjectives to describe holding a phone that's supposed yeah. to be the best of the best. 
So yeah, uh, you know, if, if, if it sells like hotcakes, well, then people will say David Pierce at The Verge is just being overly um, critical. Uh, but but if it doesn't, then yeah, maybe Samsung is, will have to rethink uh, the way that they design their phones. It's it it that that's a ter that's a terrible thing. I mean, who's ever thought that a phone felt slippery and slimy? I have without actually being slimed. Well, I've way? okay. So I'm I'm actually I've worked with David Pierce in the past. We used to work together, and I agree with his opinion. I have the S3, and I've been using this thing for a couple of weeks, and this thing just pops out of my hand like crazy compared to the ne Nexus Seven, which has that rubberized back. I've used a ton of phones reviewing things for before mm -hmm. you buy or messing with phones back when I was at PC uh, Mag. I would always play with these devices. And this is relatively a strange device. It's supposed to be the most high end. This is the S3 here, not the S4. But since this is an iterative change, I think the design language is the same. I don't know why Samsung isn't upping their game when it comes to design. They can really own this market. HTC is trying to stand out with that because they don't have a whole lot to stand on. LG is trying. And Samsung remains with this plasticky shell that probably is helping their profit margins. But now, since they are the top dog, I think they just really need to continue pushing the envelope when it comes to design. Yeah, well, I, I agree. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lamar. Uh, no, I was going to say I, I agree with that. I think design is really important. And, and for the longest time, people in the uh, Android community, and, and you know, I'm in the Android community myself, you know, didn't give that much care to, to design, whereas Apple focused on that. And, you know, the software has reached a point where, you know, it's about as good as it's going to get right now. I mean, it's not too many more bells and whistles you can add to this. So focus on the design because people do care about how phones look, even if that sounds vain. They just do. You know, a lot of people in the chat room were also pointing out most Folks, you know, you slap a case on there as long as the screen is beautiful. You know, the the way that a phone feels in your hand can be altered. So, you know, there's that too. Maybe possible that Samsung is a little burned by their continual patent violation cases and are being cautious in their design at a time when everybody's expecting them to be bold. Uh, I don't know that that's true, but that that's another thing to think about. We've been following the uh, taxi wars in New York City between Uber, the app that lets you get cars wherever you want them, and the established system there. And the New York State Supreme Court has a ruling. What's the latest, Sarah? Uh, the ruling is uh, Judge Carol Huff has dismissed a lawsuit uh, that sought to basically halt a pilot program that began back in December. You might recall we told you about how the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission, or the TLC, had voted to allow apps like Uber, Halo is another one, which is very successful in London. Uh, I've used it. It's great. Get Taxi is another app. Into a year-long pilot program basically to say, if this benefits the people of New York, this is something that we shouldn't uh, disallow. Um, it was supposed to go into effect into March, but then there was this... Uh, this lawsuit that kind of postponed the whole thing. And the idea, if you're sort of like need a little bit of a refresher, is that you put your location information into the app, then it's sent to yellow cabs. This is this sort of thing is already happening with uh, black car services, private car services. Um, but with the with the taxi cabs, you got to go through the the TLC. And so there's a lot more red tape and 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 people who get sort of bent out of shape about this. So the idea is that according to dis Today's decision, these apps have a year to sort of prove their worth to New York City, to make it so they seem indispensable and people are a lot happier and a lot, a lot more people get to where they want to go. Uh, CEO of Uber, Travis Kalanick, said, New York City has some of the deepest dug-in, most entrenched special interests in the country. The fact that Taxi Commissioner David Yasky and Mayor Mike Bloomberg we're able to overcome the transportation industry's blatant self-interest should be a lesson for other cities and states who also want to be forward-looking, tech-friendly, and visionary. Of course, it's in Uber's best interest to feel this way because they want to be in as many markets as possible. And in a city like San Francisco, uh, this is already w working really well. You've got your black car service. If I call up Uber right now on my phone, i got black car. I've got Uber X, which is sort of a it's a little bit more of a, you know, uh, smaller cars. You get Priuses and, and it's a little bit more affordable. And then you have Uber Taxi, where I'm basically just calling a taxi service. That's always the cheapest option. They usually come the fastest. So it's a, it's, if this were to work in New York City, where everyone's used to taking taxis anyway, it basically just negates the need to be hailing uh, one of them on the street. So in theory, it works really well. 
But, you know, these car companies say taxi hailing apps are going to hurt their business because now yellow cabs are taking all their business. Lamar, what do you think? I mean, I know you live in L.A. and it's a, it's a very different area when it yeah. comes to getting rides and, and taxi services and that sort of thing. But do you think uh, this is the right thing for New York? Yeah, I, actually, I've been in New York several times. It's supposed to be there uh, tomorrow for the Samsung thing, but I had to cancel that. And, and, and yeah, it's my, my response is, wah, they're crying like babies. There's enough business in New York. Uh, th th this is just, this is ridiculous that they're crying over a pilot program that only a tiny percentage of New York people will ever even know about. And if I can use an app to not be on the corner doing like this, hoping someone stops for me, uh, it it's, you know, it's a great thing. I, I, I haven't used one of these services, but I would be excited next time I'm in New York to to definitely use it. And uh, I like one, one of the quotes the CEO says is that, uh, Basically, you can't stop progress when people want it enough. And if enough people are going to, or want this, there's nothing the city can do about it. There's nothing the commission can do about it. Let it happen. Technology will rule. <laughs> All right, let's take I a quick break. Oh, okay. go ahead, sir. Well, no, I was just going to say, you know, as being a former resident of New York, I didn't know if you wanted to weigh on in this <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, I, sh I sure can. The thing is, the way the New York City system is about the Taxi Limousine Commission is it's deeply entrenched. And the way that system works is kind of shady to say the least so this 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 thing of fighting technology has been going on for a very long time so th that's a very very lucrative area for these uh, cab companies and things on top of that i was looking at the story it says it's this the new york state supreme court and a little bit of my lawyer training supreme court in new york is like it's for some reason is the lowest court so this is appealable because there's the supreme court appellate division then there's a court of appeals which is the top one so this can can, can continue anyway the less than Supreme Court. It's a strange title there. I don't know why they the did actually, that. Actually, not, act, not actually Supreme at all court. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick break and uh, thank our sponsor for today's show, 99designs, connecting the world with the greatest graphic designers uh, to create fast, affordable graphic designs. Uh, we had David Spark on the show yesterday. He used 99designs for Spark Media Solutions. The site looks great. Uh, this is how it works. You tell 99designs what you need. Uh, dozens of designers from the community submit quality designs created just for you. You give the designers your feedback. It works like a normal design process. Help them refine their designs. And then you select the one you like and you pay for your favorite. 99 Designs provides more than 210,000 graphic designers worldwide available to work on your product. World-class customer support 24-7. You can get it by phone. You can get it by email. You can do it over chat, whatever you like. And complimentary design consultation with a San Francisco design team for all your branding needs. Plus, if you don't like it, 100% money back guarantee. Uh, design categories, if you're like, well, is it just a website design thing? No, it's, a, it's logo design, uh, web design, of course, digital marketing, landing pages, Facebook cover pages. You just want to do something quick like that. Banner ads, infographics. They even do print. Flyers, brochures, all that kind of stuff. Greeting cards even, apparel design, you know, make some t-shirts and some hoodies. And mobile app design, which I know a lot of people need help with. You can start right now for as low as $199 for your own custom graphic design. Visit 99designs.com slash TNT. That's 99designs.com slash TNT. Get a $99 power pack of services, but you don't have to pay $99. You get it for free. Power Pack gives you more designer time and attention. Uh, 99 Designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in the 99 Designs Marketplace, which means the designers see it twice as much. You get nearly twice as many designs. And you can also call 800-513-1678 to get started right now. That's designated for our Twit listeners. That's 800-513-1678. Once again, 800-513-1678. Or visit 99designs.com slash TNT. Today And we thank 99designs for their support of Tech News Today. Mm -hmm. Now, we mentioned in the news views about uh, Twitter hacks happening and how Twitter, has, people have been calling on them to say, get a two-factor authentication system in place so we can d deter people from hacking into Twitter accounts. Wired reports that's happening. At the same time, we heard news today that Google has joined Fido. Now, we've talked about this before. You may or may not remember it. Uh, Fast Identity Online. It was founded by Lenovo 
PayPal, Knock Knock Labs, uh, and Validity Sensors. They do input devices. Knock Knock does voice uh, authentication. Validity does a lot of fingerprint type stuff. And the semiconductor Infineon and Agnidio, which does voice. Actually, Knock Knock does uh, other kinds of input authentication devices. So it's the people who make fingerprint sensors and voice authentication combined with the people who make devices like Lenovo, people who make semiconductors with trusted platform models like Infineon. Now being joined by Google, big name in here, uh, as well as Crucial Tech, uh, which makes input devices as well, and, uh, and and another semiconductor company, NXP, to do standards-based two-step authentication. They want to get rid of passwords. That's what we all want, right? Uh, replace it with anything, USB keys, near-field communication, voice and facial recognition, fingerprints. Google employees actually have a USB key type system that they've been testing internally that logs them in. So Google is already doing this on their own. They're going to be part of the standards-based uh, procedure for this. There's lots of different ways this works, but the idea is that if you put in a password, you're only putting a password into FIDO on the device you're authenticating, which could either be a USB key or it could be the chip in your device. Your laptop could be the thing you have, and then that FIDO password is the thing you know, and the websites never have to store any of your passwords. Now, Lamar, so I, you probably, like all of us, don't want to have to remember a bunch of different passwords and use a password mm -hmm. manager. Does this sound like a good idea? Do you think Google could push this into mainstream acceptance? I think they have to. I, I look at how, you know, just as a YouTube personality myself, just how many people I see get their accounts hacked and videos removed and deleted by by idiots. And so, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's costing people, you know, thousands, uh, you know, dollars a, a day or whatever when they when they lose their content. So, yeah, Google has to do this. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, maybe one of you all could tell me, did PayPal have a like some kind of device that you put on your key that randomized numbers that you would put a password in. I, I seem to remember some kind of some kind of device like that. What I mean, if you didn't have your phone, something that was out on your keys that would give you a four to six digit number. Yeah, to, it's similar to, to what in. Blizzard does. It's a two factor okay. authentication that that they have independent of the FIDO Alliance. Okay. Yeah, I, I I think anything like that is a plus. I know people say two factor is a pain in the butt. It was when I first put it on my you know Google account, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. Twitter is so long overdue to have this. I I, I tweet them about once every three months to like really you <laughs> are these why are big companies still getting hacked? Put this in place. It'll deter ninety percent of the problems. And that's so. the problem is when they put two-factor authentication in on something like Google or PayPal or even Dropbox, it is a pain for a lot of people. And what Fido's trying to do is take take the pain out of it, make it make it dead simple. Mm -hmm. Ayaz, do you see any pitfalls with this? Uh, it's probably in the education issue. If you're talking about NFC, so let's say because this two-factor usually works with, okay, you got a message on your phone and you, you look at that mess that number, you input it on the computer. If, if Google can explain to people, hey, you already have a Google device, you already have your phone on you all the time, you always have your laptop. It actually makes sense to do this because in the old days, you're talking about, hey, here's a USB key. Make sure you keep this on you all the time. This is all this is for. It seems a little bit uh, of a problem to get people to change their behavior. But the thing is, if you can have people understand, you're already carrying two devices. There's nothing wrong with this, and you have security, and you don't have to remember things. I think Google, because of the, the amount of hardware that they can put out between Chromebooks and phones, I think they can probably come up with a unified solution to the masses that people understand. I think one of the challenges here probably has to do with, I mean, we're talking about an organization like CBS, AP. There's probably not just one single person who's running those Twitter accounts. So then it turns into how can maybe the social media team figure out how to work with some sort of two-step solution that, that doesn't end up being a hassle for, for the team. Yeah, there's two things going on here. There's Twitter's own two-factor authentication that they're putting into place. And then, then I'm talking separately about the FIDO Alliance, which is saying, look, we don't want everybody to have to reinvent this. We want to make a standard that everybody can use that's easy. And I think that's where the trusted platform module comes in handy because for a lot of people, if you only have one computer, let's say you have a laptop, that becomes your USB key. So there's no losing the USB key. The trusted platform module is the thing you have. 
and then your FIDO pin is the thing you know, and then websites don't have to deal with this. Twitter wouldn't have had to create their own two-factor authentication. They could have just joined the FIDO alliance. So yeah, well, I really do hope that this ends up turning into something. Uh, and I'm, I'm certain that if you want to know what this is really about, you should probably be following security now, twit.tv slash SN, because Steve Gibson uh, talks about this sort of thing all the time, and I'm sure they'll be talking about some of these hacks in today's show as well. Nintendo had their earnings report, and uh, it was a little confusing in the news view. So they 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 had good earnings, but not for the reasons they wanted. Huh? Yeah, let's let's try to clarify that. And I did correct myself on that. So let's talk about Nintendo's operating loss and day to day operations. They've lost thirty six point four billion yen. That's around three hundred sixty six million dollars. That's a second second consecutive loss uh, annually for the company. But Nintendo did have a net profit of over seven billion yen. That's around seventy one million dollars in U S money. That means Nintendo didn't make any money from its day-to-day -day operations, like selling video game consoles and, and games. What they made more money on is the currency fluctuations of the, of the yen and investments. Nintendo, I believe, sold its its uh, one of its places of business as renting it out. Uh, the Wii U sold 3.45 million units worldwide to date. Now Nintendo's goal was to, was to send out 4 million, so they missed that goal, and uh, that was. That was the actual a revision. They originally wanted to sell 5.5 million. They only sold 3.45 million. So that's a real problem. And three months ago, Nintendo said it sold 3.06 million. So it only sold like point oh, uh, only a little bit more on top of that. And then last week, though, Nintendo's uh, CEO of America, Nintendo of America CEO, was talking about how digital downloads are becoming a notable contributor to the company's bottom line. You can see it's really not doing a huge difference. Lamar, is there anything that Nintendo can do at this point to get themselves to right this ship? I, I think they need to I think they need to sell this better somehow like like you know the the Nintendo generation myself from the original ones on we we've kind of moved on to the more powerful machines and and I know as you know we we keep thinking of Nintendo nostalgic sense they they need to go back to kids and need st you know stop trying to appeal to us our generation we're we're gone I mean, a lot of us won't, won't come back to Nintendo, but they need to appeal somehow to the the kid generation. They're doing a great job with the mobile, uh, you know, the, the the mobile consoles they have. The uh, what are they called? Because I don't have one. The 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 look game. The CDS. Thank you, because uh, I was going to say GameCube. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think they need to they need to sit down and say how can we make this attractive for kids again and kind of give up on trying to appease us. Uh, cause they, they make great stuff. I just, just like the Wii U it just didn't hit with me. It, 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 it didn't do anything for me, which is why I don't have one. Sarah, it seems like we've been talking about this story for a couple of years now. Nintendo, mm -hmm. they released some numbers. It's depressing. They seem to be lagging behind. They're the first to come out with the next generation consoles with their Wii U. PS4 is coming up. Xbox, three, uh, Xbox, whatever the next version is coming out, uh, and rumored anyway this year. Shouldn't Nintendo have a leg up on this? You know what Nintendo needs? A Pizza Hut app. <laughs> <laughs> right on that That'll console. No, I think I think that, yeah, uh, as Lamar says, Nintendo kind of has this nostalgia thing that's been going on for a while. Yeah, you got people in the chat room saying Zelda and that sort of thing. But it's like there is a real Nintendo legacy thing that I just don't think is keeping people interested um, and hasn't been for some time the way that it used to be. Um, and Nintendo, as far as consoles go, they've they've got competition. There are, there are going to be next gen consoles coming out this year that you know will delight and amaze if all goes well for the other companies. So, yeah, you know, I've been saying for a while, Nintendo's got to embrace the way that people play games these days. You know, get 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 onto more smartphones and. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> wow. Is that Tom? Uh, for, for our audio listeners, there's a picture of Tom back in his bedroom in 1975. I, when he I was would have 11. wished that was my bedroom back then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I, I don't know if Nintendo is going to be the market leader ever again. Um, I, I think that they've, they've held on to the past a little too long. Tom, does Nintendo even need to be a market leader? You're one of the few people who owns a Wii U, and it's hooked up, so it's it's gangbusters in your house, right? Yeah, never use it. Um, I I think Nintendo backed themselves in a corner. The more I think about this, the 3DS is doing great, uh, it, but it's a dead end market. And what they did with the Wii 
is that they put themselves in a dead-end market and then they blinked. The Wii's big advantage was we're not going to try to be the PS3 and the Xbox 360. We're going to go for the other people. We're going to be casual. We're going to be easy to use. We're going to have motion control, something innovative that it really worked. People ate the Wii up, even though hardcore gamers said nobody uses it. It didn't matter. The Wii U blinked. The Wii U said, oh, but we should probably try to reattract some of those hardcore gamers. And now you've got this kind of hybrid Frankenstein thing that just doesn't work. <laughs> the casual people don't want to buy it because they're a little scared by it. Uh, it doesn't have an innovative thing with, the, with that dashboard controller as much as they tried to make it sound like that. And it's not cheaper. Uh, so I, I, I just think they... They, they should have kept going along the lines they were thinking of with the Wii somehow. Yeah, that Nintendo nostalgia hook is really losing people because as you get older yep. and more generations are growing up, uh, they're not going to know that Nintendo was like really fun or this is the game I used to play. Now it's like, oh, you're one of those guys who has this game that you don't really play. Nintendo's consoles seem to be about five to six years behind because they are just adding in some rich media experiences in their entertainment part of the Wii U that Xbox was trying to figure out a long time ago and, and, and PlayStation's been trying to do forever. Now they're kind of joining the game, and they're not really doing a great job because TV, that Nintendo Wii's TV uh, feature, is just not fully baked. It just doesn't seem like it's hitting on on anybody's radar. Yeah, yeah everybody. Er, oh, sorry, I was gonna say everybody is like is telling Nintendo, you need to go mobile. You need to go mobile. Put Mario on the phones and things. And I mean, I I think the, I mean. They're gonna have to do that at some point. the The problem is that's gonna kill their own business. I mean, once they they live on hardware, so they have to find some kind of solution because yeah, the 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 phones, Android has even come along with games. They're 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 killing uh, these devices. So something has to be done. Sorry, pops. Zelda's yep. for old people. <laughs> Show me something new, Nintendo. Uh, speaking of pops, let's talk about Freedom Pop. They announced a new hotspot today. Yeah, so Freedom Pop um, had promised, in addition to the YMAX coverage with their free data plans uh, that we've talked about in the past, had promised Sprint LTE by the end of 2012. Well, obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, but they did, uh, um, as, as of today, they're now offering access to Sprint's 3G network in addition to their YMAX, YMAX coverage. They've got a few different options, but the new $40 Overdrive Pro MiFi hotspot will connect to both Sprint 3G and then clear uh, wires WiMAX um, to, to give you better coverage. There was obviously the complaint that, well, you know, WiMAX coverage is only going to help certain people in certain places and it's not actual really good coverage. So this is definitely a better blanket. Although people who are familiar with Sprint's 3G service may say, yeah, but that's really slow. So it's better coverage overall, but it's not necessarily a lot faster in, in key areas. But what's good is that users get 500 megabytes of the 3G slash 4G coverage for free each month. Some of you would say, I need a lot more than that, but it is free. Um, and then you can choose a monthly two gigabyte plan for about twenty dollars. There's a trial offer right now that waives the first month, so you'd get a, you get you'd get a month of of two gigabytes um, on this plan for free, and the the uh, device itself is about forty bucks. Lamar, are you uh, are are you in the market for something like this? Do you like what Freedom Pop is offering? Do you think that Sprint 3G is is a good stopgap until they can actually get LTE? No, my my face shows it. <laughs> I'm I'm reading this. And I was like. Sprint already just, and I, I'm a long time user of Sprint back in the day when I had my Palm Trio and all that, but their 3G is just not good. And I'm, I'm just frowning at this, like, what are, what are they offering here? You now you, you can, you know, go to Boost Mobile and get a better deal, it seems like. I, 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 I don't know. Um, I'm I'm not happy. I'm not I'm not impressed. So I was excited until I saw <laughs> that it was WiMAX still. I was like, if this is a 3G with an LTE radio built in that maybe doesn't work right now, but will work when Sprint starts rolling out more, I I might consider snapping this up. But it's still 3G and WiMAX. That's that's the past. We know yeah. Sprint's getting rid of that stuff. Yeah. Ayaz, do you think anybody's going to be excited by the fact that you're still getting some free data, even though the speeds aren't going to be anything uh, exceptional? 
I think that's the trade-off. If you're not spending a whole lot of money for the device, you're not spending a whole lot, a lot of money for the service, you might be a little bit more forgiving of that. And when Freedom Pop showed up and they had only WiMAX coverage, the coverage area was so limited that that kind of stopped its adoption, or it didn't, it didn't exactly help the adoption. By being on Sprint 3G network, no matter how cruddy it may be, uh, the fact is it does, ha it does increase the coverage area, the footprint for something like Freedom Pop. I think there's, again, this is a slow going. This is a different style of mobile uh, services that we're looking at here. So it's just the beginning of it. So one day I'm expecting LTE. They want to do this. And Sprint obviously wants to sell its services to lots of places like Virgin and Boost. Uh, Boost actually runs on Sprint. So mm -hmm. maybe uh, this will keep Freedom Pop floating along up to the point where they can be uh, an LTE provider. Well, you know who else is also floating along since we're talking about Sprint? Um, Sprint had some not very good uh, earnings uh, to report. They lost a million customers. They also lost over $1 billion in the last quarter. They had a net loss of $643 million on revenue, which was around $8.8 .8 billion just because they're a really high business cost to, to attend to iPhone sales fell about a third relative yeah. to last quarter, so 2.2 million down to 1.5 million, um, and and then Sprint lost half a million customers, most of those attributed to uh, former Nextel subscribers. So this is a it's a very interesting time for Sprint, um, especially since obviously it's got some suitors. So you know we'll see where we are in in, uh, in six months. Hurry up, SoftBank, Dish, yeah. somebody buy them. Somebody. Where are they? disappear. Let's uh, fire up the randomizer. randomizer. BBC News has a story called How Are Humans Going to Become Extinct? Because apparently it's all but inevitable if we're not careful. Uh, an international team of scientists, mathematicians, and philosophers at Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute has good news and bad news. The good news is, as a species, we probably won't get wiped out by the things we think. Pandemics, nuclear wars, all of those things may cause mass death, but will survive as a species. Somebody will survive to carry on. What these folks are warning of is technology that we don't know the side effects of. Things like nanotechnology, things like artificial intelligence that could just go off on a, on a tear, not even maliciously, just doing things that we didn't expect they were going to do and wipe us all out. And in fact, uh, among the folks that are talking about this is Janice Fries, former co-founder of Skype, uh, saying that we should create a center for the study of existential risk. And these guys are serious. They're like, look, we need to take this seriously now before we start developing these technologies. We're like toddlers with adult tools in our hands. I, I think I think they're watching too many Terminator movies at, at, this, center, <laughs> at this center. I, I don't know. I, tech, technology, technology definitely has, has, its, uh, has its side effects. I do not think it's going to turn on us, though. And well, kill us all. There, um, there are all kinds of scenarios, like the gray goo scenarios, where nanoparticles get out of the lab. I mean, don't don't you think it's a good idea to to set the boundaries and be careful? It's like nah, looking, let it all out. Let it all out. It's like looking at the past, right? <laughs> it's like looking at the past when you thought technology like asbestos was great. It was fireproofing everything. It's fantastic, but then it, it would cause cancer. Like it caused issues, health issues. So maybe it's not so crazy to think, hey, look, maybe these things that that are are going to be great. They're going to have these awesome uh, effects they could actually cause issues if you don't if you're not going to bother to look at, at your past you're not going to be able to have a future that's right i'm being very serious today during the randomizer i think this could be good why not have a, a, have a bunch of people think this over and actually have technology that's safe because i don't want i don't want people to use this on the other end saying let's stop all technology now because we're fine now yeah essentially they're just yeah. saying uh look we're for technology we just want to make sure that we don't we're getting such powerful technology being researched now that we want to just make sure we don't do something stupid. Yeah. Well, we might fair. already be. I mean, in 30 years, we might all have brain cancer and that'll be the end of it. I mean, well, nobody Nick can Bost predict that quite yet, but... Nick Bostrom is the head of this Oxford Center that's, that's uh, the lead part of this article. He's also the guy that says there's a chance, there's a good chance that we're all living in a simulation anyway. Great. And it's like mathematically proven this isn't just like you know i'm sitting in, at 4 20 in the afternoon coming up with this like he's got science behind it so. well who would create this <laughs> who, who would create this body and face my god you can do better than this i want to reskin uh, <laughs> download hot. something hmm. all right now now our own institute of the future sarah lane will tell us what's going to happen soon on the calendar
I predict Amazon earnings tomorrow, <gasps> April 25th. You're good. Also tomorrow, the next web conference is happening in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, BlackBerry has announced the Q10 launch will happen in Canada on May 1st. $199 with a three-year contract at Rogers, Bell, and TELUS. The Optimus G Pro is going to be sort of the the centerpiece of the Share the Genius event that LG's putting on May 1st. And during the show, we learned that the next-gen Xbox is going to be unveiled on Microsoft's Redmond campus on May 21st, just a little less than a month from now. Ooh, nice. can't wait to find out what its name is. Yay. Let's see what's incoming. Incoming message. We got a message from a person who didn't bother to give a name. Hey, guys, love this show. In regards to texting and driving on episode 738, I agree with both Tom and Ayas on the issue. However, I think, however, a law will need to be put in place. Ayas mentioned that auto manufacturers have an awesome opportunity to meet this challenge head on. The problem is they usually don't innovate wide scale until some kind of regulatory safety law is passed. Look at, safe, at seat belts, airbags, and now backup cams as they are on the docket. It seems manufacturers' mandate would get their motors running on more aggressive phone integration, but I don't see them doing it on their own. Thanks, guys. You guys think that uh, the automakers need a law to actually make changes? I'm not sure what changes they they could make, though, because the study said yeah. it's dangerous to even just do voice recognition. So what would the auto manufacturers do to make it safer? Yeah, the only thing I can think of is to... Is to the driverless cars or the, the the car i mean you'll still be in a car but you wouldn't have to drive it that's the only i mean that's the only solution uh to this and, and a long-term solution but i was i was thinking about this how what could they do to keep somebody from 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 texting with the car Faraday down? cage car you could actually probably do that if you wanted it hmm. if you want to stop you somebody do some, uh some stuff where you know it senses how fast the car is going and shuts it down so you can't hmm. use it okay stuff all right well, thanks for that. No name given. Appreciate the uh, the email. And uh, Lamar Wilson, thank you for yes, joining sir. us on the show. It's always good to have you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, people want to check out This Week in YouTube. It's Sundays at 2 p.m. Pacific live. And we have a bunch of live people there. It's crazy how many people watch their live. And then, um, yeah, it, it comes out on Mondays for download or on YouTube. So you check All that out at twit.tv slash YT. Exactly. You can also right. uh, go to our subreddit, technewstoday.reddit.com, to participate in this show. Let us know what stories you'd like us to cover on the show. You can find us all the time at twit.tv slash TNT. Email us, TNT at twit.tv, and give us a call. Leave us a voicemail, 260-TNT-SHOW. We'll see you next time with Patrick Beja.